Types of IRs. <clears throat> Look now, please. There are basically three types of IRs. Fine. UKVI, non UKVI, and life skills. Right? Please try to understand. Life skills. This is okay. When did UKVI, you know, jump into the market? Right? When did UKVI, you know, start its operations? Fine. Before 2014. There were two types of IELTS, IELTS academic, and the second was IELTS journal, right? Right, academic, journal, academic, journal. You want to go on study visa, academic. You want to go on immigration visa, okay, journal, right? That was the basic concept of IELTS academic and journal. Now, in 2014, September, right, 2014, September, for the first time, IELTS UKVI jumped. Fine. And when IELTS UKVI came, so automatically, you know, this is now UKVI and now the older version IELTS Academic and IELTS Journal, it is now non-UKVI. So IELTS UKVI, IELTS non-UKVI and IELTS Life Skills. Guys, remember, UKVI, please listen, UKVI and Life Skills. These, these two versions appeared, you know, in the month of September or at the end of September, right, 2014. And after that, then, you know, now those students who want to go, please listen carefully, okay. What is UK VI? UK visa and immigration. UK visa and immigration. What is non-UK VI? Non-UK visa and immigration. Now, look please, if you want to study in the UK, right, I would strongly recommend to go with UKVI IELTS, please, yeah, don't go with non-UKVI, because these days, 100% universities accept, you know, UKVI, non-UKVI is a big issue, right, so please, don't go with non-UKVI, UKVI test is, you know, for IELTS students, right, like, who want to study in the UK, or any college, or any university, but in the UK, Right, now, if you want to go to Australia, Canada, Germany, Italy, Norway, these countries, I would recommend non-UKVI. Are you getting me? Yes. What is the difference between UKVI and <coughs> non-UKVI? No difference. Test remains the same. Pattern remains the same. Test style remains the same. Everything remains the same. Right? So, then what is the basic difference? Yes, three differences between UKVI and non-UKVI. Fee difference, UKVI is pretty expensive, a little bit expensive, then non-UKVI. I will show you the fee as well, <clears throat> but non-UKVI is, non-UKVI is pretty cheap. UKVI is a bit expensive, one, the first difference. Second difference, UKVI, is only in three stations, only three stations, you know, across Pakistan, three stations, Islamabad, Lahore, Karachi, that's it. If you want to appear in the UK VI test, right, you will have to go to either Islamabad, Lahore or Karachi. You can't appear in Peshawar station. We don't have UK VI in Peshawar at the moment. Maybe, okay, in the near future, if UK VI jumps into Peshawar here, right, there's another story there. But so far, we don't have UK VI in Peshawar. We have only three stations, right? Second difference. The third difference, that is UK VI, uh, yes. You know uh, the certificate right so UKVI certificate is little little change for example look at here uh, suppose uh, this is this is you know a year certificate right now look at here guys can you see family name first name and can ID this is now non UKVI certificate right now how can we understand this is UKVI certificate Right, so UKVI certificate is like this. Can you see now? Now look, there are basically now four things. Can you see family name, first name, ID, UKVI number. So on the UKVI certificate, right, we have UKVI number. This thing is not there on the non-UKVI certificate. 
That is the only one difference. Otherwise, everything remains the same. Listening, reading. Hey, hello. Even test is the same. No difference. Yeah, fee difference. Stations difference. Right? And on your IELTS certificate, we have this extra, you know, like um, line is given. UKVI number. There is another question. Excuse me. If you are having UKVI IELTS, can you go to Australia? Yes, why not? Everywhere you can go, especially UK, or if you want to go to you know, Australia or Canada or anywhere in the world, you can go on UKVI. But the problem is, excuse me, if you pass non-UKVI, if you pass non-UKVI, and then you want to go to the UK, you can't go. There is one condition, and the condition is that yes, yes, you can go. You can go, <clears throat> for example, if, if listening, reading, writing, and speaking. If you get 5.5 here, 5.5 here, 5.5 here, here, and here, 5.5. Now, if you get each 5.5 on non-UKVI, you can go to UK as well. Is it clear? Yes, sir. But if in case... For example, hello, you got here six bands, seven bands, eight bands, but here you got five. You cannot go to UK now. Because one is less than 5.5. .5. One is less than 5.5. .5. That is the problem, you know. Otherwise, non UKVI and UKVI is the same thing. But if you're 100% sure, if you're very, very, very certain that, yes, sir, I can, I can bring 5.5 .5 in each section, then non-UKVI, I pay a non-UKVI, right? So if you pass a year with 5.5 .5 each, so you can go to even UK or you can go to even Australia or Canada or any country there. Guys, is it, is it, is it clear now? Yes, sir. Right. That's all the difference between UKVI and non-UKVI. Okay, now let's talk about life skills. What is life skills? A1 and A2. Guys, remember, I use life skills. This is only for UK, but this is actually for spouse visas, right? For example, for example, you are uh, like you're married, okay? Uh, you're having British passport and you want to, okay, you know, sponsor your wife. Uh, your wife is in Pakistan or India or somewhere out of the UK and you are basically sponsoring her. She will have to pass life skills. She will not go with UKVI or with non-UKVI. She'll have to go with life skills and life skills. She will pass A1, not A2. Hello. A1 is required, you know, just for the entrance. Fine. And uh, once she enters into the UK, after that, after spending three to four years, you know, then again she will have to go with indefinite visa. And then again she will apply with life skills A2 inside UK to get, you know, indefinite in the UK. So that is the, you know, the possibility. And then you can go with life skills A1 and A2. That is only for spouse visas. Everyone should know you know, like, and everyone should be very much clear with the things, okay, that what is your targeted, you know, IELTS, right, either UKVI or non-UKVI or life skills, fine. Now we're having, again, excuse me, we're having, you know, <clears throat> academic and journal, right, UKVI again has academic and journal, non-UKVI, academic and journal, right. Now, let me tell you about academic, now look at it here, academic visa, you know, academic, UKVI academic, now, eh, for higher studies to all countries, including English uh, or, you know, non-English speaking countries, right? So look, if you want to go and if you, you know, if you pass UKVI academic, right, you can go to every country, but it's only for study visa. Guys, are you getting me? Yes, Fine. Yes. But if you are having different purposes, for example, business visa. Oh, there is a bad news. Business visa is closed. UK stopped applications anyway so business visa you know if you want to open your own business in the UK so you will have to go with UKVI journal not academic UKVI journal. journal yes work permit right these days many students you know even many you know like uh, companies and they are sponsoring right so work permit visa skill visa right and immigration so, you, you know, if you're having four, you know, other than study, you know, for example, you want to go on immigration skill or blah, 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 then you will have to go with IELTS uh, journal, UKVI journal. journal. 
for study purposes academic, academic. and for um, uh, for these four purposes journal. journal now let's go ahead yes this is non ukvi right so non ukvi is the same story right if you pass non ukvi academic so you can go with the uh, you know, like uh, study visa, Australia, Canada, or even if you get 5.5 each, so you can go to the UK as well. Non-UKVI. Guys, getting me? Yes, yes. And the same is the story here for non-UKVI journal. For non-UKVI journal, business visa, work permit visa, skill visa, or immigration visa. After that, yes, that is, you know, like the exceptional case we discussed earlier, right? This case is exceptional, fine. Non-UKVI 5.5 each will allow you to apply to the UK too, yeah. right? If in case you get 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, and a 5.5 there, in every section, yes, no doubt, you can go with the straight with non-UKVI to the UK's universities or colleges too. So let's talk about now, uh, IELTS uh, grades, yeah, okay? Look students, we have grading system as well here. For example, A, look, in listening section, for example, you got 8, huh? in reading 7.5, writing 6.5, speaking 7, overall 7.5, and then we have C1. Can you see? Yes, yes, yes. We have C1 now. Now, what is C1 actually? C1 is basically the grading system, right? And this is called CEFR level. Look, we're having basically grades. We're having six grades. A1, A2, B1, B2, C1. C2. We have six grades in IELTS, right? A1 and A2. Guys, have you have you uh, you know observed this sometime when you when you apply and when you apply online there, yeah? And many universities are asking you for English proficiency B2, and then you're thinking, what is B2, man? Tell me bands. How many bands do you want? Right? I don't know B2, B1. Tell me bands. How many bands? Right, so this is band system, right? A1 is actually from 2 to 2.5, this is A1, and then 3 to 3.5, this is A2, and then B1 starts with four bands. B1 starts, many universities are asking B1, right? So B1 is basically starts from four, and it ends at five. And then B2 from 5.5 to, to 6.5. This is B2. And 7 is, you know, C1, 7 to 8 bands. And then 8.5 to 9, this is called C2. Right. Now look, CEFR means, this is called Common European Framework of Reference for Languages. Right. And look, this is the level. Then now guys, look now please, hey, so CEFR level, right, this is basically, look, you know, we, it starts from A1 and then it ends at C2. C2 is the highest level, right, and the lowest level that is A1, right. Normally, you know, students, right, uh, from A1, you know, sorry, B1, it starts, yeah, and then B1, B2, and then C1, C2. If in case you get even B1 there, still you are eligible to go to the UK on foundation visa, right, yeah, and then B2, and then C1, and then C2 after that. Before we start, uh, discussing about the fee of IELTS, let's discuss a bit about the boards. British Council, AEO and IDP. These three boards are there, right? And only and only these three boards are active. No other board is functional. Guys, remember, you can only go to British Council, AEO or IDP to give you, you know, just the IELTS certificate. Now, British Council, fees revise from 2022, okay, right, recently fees change. British Council, UKVI, it was 3,500 there, and now fees change, 38,500. And British Council, you know, non-UKVI, old fee, 33, is 34, so 1,000 jump, okay, from this 2022. Now, if you go with, you know, uh, British Council, non-UKVI, Right, Islamabad and Lahore stations, right? Islamabad, Lahore, 38,280, and this is 39,404. This is now a new fee for Islamabad and Lahore station. British Council, non UKVI, old and new. British Council, non UKVI for Karachi station, now this is 38,420. Yeah, and this is, you know, the new fee for British Council, non UKVI, 
uh, Karachi. AEO now. Look, AEO is also, you know, like evolving body and AEO also, you know, uh, conducts IRS. AEO came in 1997, right? And um, it has been, you know, conducting IELTS tests since 1997. AO revised fee from you know first Jan 2022 and that is AO oh yes no change no change look at here now yeah old fee and new fee 37800 and 37800 right so AO didn't change the fee of UKVI old fee is 37800 and new is also the same but yes nine yes non UKVI had a big jump 6000 sorry 3000 33 and 36 right so that is the fee of non UKVI you know AEO, you know, old fee and uh, new fee. After that, then we're having another one, and that is AEO, non UKVI old for Islamabad in Lahore Station 38, 280, and 41,760 is the new fee. And then AEO, non UKVI Karachi is a 4680, that is the fee for AEO, non UKVI. After that, yes, life skills fee, that is 29,320 is the newest fee, right, for, you know, British Council AEO, both, they charge the same fee and this is you know all about IELTS life skills, IELTS UKVI, non-UKVI and a fee of all these four versions.